of all the interesting uh, videos there are to make, making one about room correction software, speaker correction software, it's very difficult to make a video that's interesting visually and with any kind of sort of story arc. What I'm doing is I'm not going to be going into any of the specs and that kind of thing, but I will share my experience as a mixer and as somebody who knows their speakers very well using the new IK Multimedia Arc Studio uh, hardware unit. That's a really exciting thing and I'm going to talk about that as well on crappy old 20 year old Tannoy Reveals passive speakers powered by a 40 plus year old hi-fi amp. It's quite something. So there's no musical example, there's nothing really I can show you except the stuff itself. So come on. here we go. So this is under my desk, right? Ah, uh, right. This box here, let me get a light for you. So this is the Arc Studio. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> Right, so this is the Arc Studio box. It's got a power LED uh, to show you it's on, a signal and clip LED, I assume that changes color, and a on off button for the correction. You can hear that there's a click uh, because there's a relay in there, which means when it's off, it's completely bypassed, it's physically bypassed. So like, um, gig rig or like those pedal switches that are true bypass. I think this is the same sort of thing. On the back, you've got two XLRs in, two XLRs out, a uh, USB-C cable and a power supply. Now you can unplug the USB-C and it's still working. So this is in line between my interface and my monitor setup. We come out of the interface into this. Oh my God, what have I done here? I'm gonna to have to hold you. Um, come out of the um, <laughs> out of the interface into this. Um, it just sits up here. Uh, then uh, it does the room correction. Whether it's <sighs> is this working for you? <laughs> I'm gonna just put this up here. Right, let's try it. So the um, we come out of my interface. It goes into the. Uh, uh, into the box, into the hardware correction box, and then it goes out to, it's actually going to a sub, which has the crossover. Uh, so the sub subby stuff goes to the sub and then the rest of it goes to the speakers. Um, so then it comes out of the sub into the amplifier. This is a NAD hi-fi amp from the 1980s. It makes a great sound when you turn it on. And uh, out to these Tannoy reveals, which I've had for over 20 years. They're awful. Let me tell you about the Tannoy Reveals. They are uh, muddy, cloudy, woolly. Uh, they're kind of incoherent. There's no top end uh, definition. There's zero sizzle. And the mid range is uh, kind of cloudy too. The stereo separation is weak. I've been using these. I These were my first speakers when I first started out. So I've been using these like in the living room, like for watching TV and that kind of thing. So I do know the sound of them very well. And I've struggled with them for many, uh, for many years uh, until I upgraded to the Neumann KH120s. They're not here, as you can see, because uh, they are broken. They're being repaired. So they're currently over in Germany being repaired. So the IK wanted to send this over. It's an opportunity to test this software with crap speakers. And that's exactly what I've done. And I am here to tell you the difference in the sound of these speakers once they're corrected, uh, especially, for, you know, corrected for the room as well, uh, is remarkable. So this is, this is a loft, a converted loft. Um, it's a basically a third bedroom. It's an end of terrace. Um, old 200 year old house. So what, and what we've got acoustic wise, uh, acoustic treatment wise, is we've got these panels. These are the thick ones, you know? So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Oh, hold on, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10 of those just sort of propped up against the wall. They're a few inches off the wall for the most part. There's nothing on the ceiling. And uh, yeah, that is it in terms of the um, acoustic treatment here. Uh, but I know the sound of the Neumanns and uh, these 
it, I can't tell you it's the same, but I can work with it. I can actually work with it. It's amazing. So the way um, the way you take the uh, the reading is with this microphone. It comes with the mic and the clip, obviously not the stand. It's a tiny, tiny little mic, very lightweight. I'll stick it on a stand, pop it up at like ear level or whatever that is, facing you know facing your speakers. Uh, so say that's ear level and it, you, it plays you weird and wonderful sounds. And then you get like, it's not that sound, that's my desk. Um, and then you do another one there, 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 there. And uh, I think you do seven uh, for the basic reading and that's what I did. If you wanna do a more fancy one, you do one, do it a bit lower and then you do it a bit higher and you do I think 21 readings. I did the simple one, the 7.1. Uh, I'm using the very basic, uh, the just the most rudimentary just a normal room uh, with no speaker emulation. So what you can do is in the software, um, is you've got this list of all the different types of speaker that you can emulate. So if you wanna know what it's gonna sound like through a Bluetooth speaker, it gives you one of those. So they're uh, quite useful, but for me, that kind of just confuses the matter. Like I need to just be in the room uh, that I'm used to and hearing it like I'm, like I'm used to. So I don't tend to use those very much. However, um, it's quite useful to be able, be able to switch between different profiles. So you could do one, for example, with the sub on or with the sub off, you can do, um, and then just switch between them. However, this is a big, this moves me on to like the big thing here is that this is a hardware box. So you can unplug it completely from your machine. Why is this important? Let me tell you. So when you're using things like Zoom, Teams, like Facebook, you say you've got a laptop and you're regularly plugging and unplugging things. So I've got a MacBook Pro um going into a cow digit dock now my interface my monitors everything all my controllers and everything is connected into the dock so i saw one cable into the macbook now connecting disconnecting which i do all the time it gets it can get a bit confusing for the audio system sometimes and i'll have to turn my monitor uh, my interface on and off and that kind of thing so having th uh, like a bit of software running in the background or worse still, like the olden days, having to put it on the master bus um, is something, it's, it's just not, can, doesn't give you any consistency. Um, and it's another thing to kind of interfere with and to use up a little bit of processing power too. Uh, I think in the olden days, you'd have to put like a plug-in and you can do that with this. You do get a plug-in that you can put on the master bus of Logic or Pro Tools or Cubase. And you can uh, you can just turn that on, and that gives you room correction. But then, the music that you listen to on iTunes or Spotify, the music that you're hearing on uh, on YouTube or anything else that goes through your speakers, you you get used to that sound. And then when it comes to do your important work and you turn it on, you've got a different profile, and it's far better, in my opinion, to have a consistent sound all the time in your room that you get to know. So you know what movies sound like, you know what your favorite records sound like, you know what, I don't know, whatever you're listening to, it sounds like, and you get to know the sound of the room. So this is on all the time and it just sits under here um, doing nothing. It's de so dead simple. Now, so you take the reading in one bit of software and then you, uh, you can then transfer it into the hardware with another piece of software. And it's super simple. And then you can close those apps. You don't have to have them open at all. It's this, and I love this. Like that's the problem with Sonar Works, is that that there's got this. Uh, there's an app running all the time, and you have to make sure it's running. You have to make sure it's. Sometimes it needs restarting. It's running updates and all the rest of it. It's a pain in the ass. So, uh, yeah. My experience here is that it's made these speakers. It's so weird. Like. It's off and then you switch it on, you're in the listening position, you turn it on and the whole sound sort of goes, Who? like it kind of goes, is, cause I think it's correcting phase as well, like the timing of the speakers. So if you're in the right spot, it corrects the phase a little and you, uh, you can see like the massive um, EQ changes that it's making on, on behalf of the room and the speakers. We've got an asymmetrical sort of setup here. Um, so I think my left speaker is a bit boomier. It's a bit boomier from the left because of the proximity to the wall and the ceiling, which is angled. 
uh, than the right. And you can see that on screen. It makes a massive difference and the sound just kind of opens up and uh, I think it's really, really workable. So I have to recommend this. Um, it's not expensive either, a couple hundred quid. And if you take a budget monitoring system, say you've got, you buy some old Tannoy reveal like the active ones on eBay for, I don't know, 150 quid, whatever they cost with this software like you i'm not saying it's going to give you a studio like professional studio mastering quality um uh, uh, response because there's other things to think about there's the actual transient response of the speakers and you can't do anything about that you can't do anything about how the speaker recreates transients um but for frequencies for like getting your low end right and that sort of thing oh my god why am i on the floor this is unsustainable it really does quite a bit i, I have to say super impressed and uh it's come at just the right time isn't it funny how life provides you with the things you need oh latency let me talk to you about latency um when i've i've listened to a, a click a logic a click through logic with headphones on and the speakers on and there's like a barely perceivable delay so i think you're okay to track with it on uh, don't, I don't think that's going to be problematic. I think it is going to be one of the things. I mean, it says near zero latency, so I'm, perhaps I'm missing something. Right, yes, figured this out. This is to do with the phase setting. So in natural phase, uh, which I think is the default, uh, latency is zero milliseconds or it's, it's nothing. If uh, you use the linear phase setting, uh, which is where uh, what I had it set at, it's 50 milliseconds uh, with the hardware box. Now that sounds pretty much exactly what I was experiencing. Uh, that's felt about right. So that's what's happening there. So if you're tracking, stick it in natural phase mode, whether you'll tell the difference between natural phase and linear phase is another matter altogether. I'm not sure I can tell the difference, um, but yep, that's what was happening there. Zero latency, 100% possible. If you've got a cheap and or like a not good monitoring system and you've got a not good room and let's be honest, that's like gonna be 99% of people that watch this will be people who are in a converted bedroom or a living room or something like that. I think very worthwhile. And the fact, like I say, that it's a hardware box that doesn't get, that's not gonna get confused by being switched on, rebooting, blah, 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 blah. It's just on between your interface and your speakers all the time is like a very, very good way of doing it. There's a ton of features in the software as well. There's loads of options. I like it very much, actually. I'm getting off the floor now, but I hope everyone's well. Thanks for watching and uh, keep it real.